Recently, we've had three Reaper updates come out. And so in this video, we're going to catch up on some of the important things that have happened in those updates. So I'm actually going to start off with something that I missed in the 5.97 changelog. Video, add processor functions, GFX, get pixel, input, get name, on parameter change, time precise, blah, 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 blah. Uh, the important one here, or the, the one that I think is the most interesting and useful, is input, get name. And I didn't know what this meant until I saw a forum post about it. I'm just going to insert a empty MIDI item here. Then I'll add in the video processor. And in here, I will use the, where is it? The basic text overlay preset. And see here, untitled MIDI item is the default name now for a text item that you have. So you can always override it by entering a new name, but it's going to default to the item name. So the old way of doing this would be um, typing in a name, saving it with Control S on Windows or Command S on Mac, and then that's your name. But if this is blank now, it's going to get the name of the item. So how do we change the name of an item? Item properties, and in here, the highlighted field is the take name. So um, song title, something like that. You hit enter, and you move the cursor a little bit, should get, there we go, song title. Uh, the cursor just has to move by a frame. And we can always format this. Let's put this in the middle, 0 0.5. That, and turn off the background. Um, so yeah, so there's song title. I could change this to verse. I think that's a really convenient way of doing it. I'm also going to update my own presets for this. So I've got, um, let's see, essential text overlay. Yeah, I need to save this again with, without the background color. And yeah, same situation, different starting point, more options like text colors and things like that will be available in this one. It also has a drop shadow. So if we make this green, let's see there's a drop shadow on it. So, um, so yeah, that's just a really simple one, but I think that could be a big time saver. You can use this for um, putting lyrics, putting any information you want on the video window as text can be done a little bit easier now. Using the item properties take name or another action from SWS, which is rename takes. So you run that and let's call it chorus and then move by one frame and there we go. Pretty simple, but pretty helpful, I think. So on to the 5.971 functions that have changed Two bug fixes for retune, fix per take effects manual mode timing and fix effects manual mode inconsistencies with global project offset. Yeah, so if you're using retune on uh, individual items, uh, it's going to work a little bit better. Couple bug fixes for you there. There was a text rendering alignment issue with certain characters and fonts. This is actually something that I reported to Justin and uh, he fixed it right away. I ran into this with my glitch effects tutorial um, as I was going through that project uh, more carefully uh, to make the video. There was this bug here. This probably didn't affect anyone else but me. Yeah, so this isn't gonna happen to anyone else. Uh, we can now draw text with larger font sizes up to 700 point and performance improvements with looped playback. In 
Uh, in the ARA effects menu, there's an action to align media to detected grid. So I'm going to bring in a, a loop here like this. I'm going to insert Melodyne on this item. Pitch Melodyne. If this is shifted off the grid like that, um, there is a function in Melodyne or in the effects window now. Uh, ARA align media to detected grid. Click that. And that meet that item is now going to snap to the grid. In 5.97, there was another option here to um, export the tempo and the notes as separate files. And now it's just um, to import into the project. And I think they took that out because there didn't need to be multiple uh, like repeated functions. If you want to export this, there's always the file um, export project MIDI, or if you go into the MIDI editor, um, there's the option of exporting the MIDI as a new MIDI file. So I think they just didn't want to have redundant functions, but I didn't ask them, and uh, you know, I don't work for them, so that's just what that's just what I'm assuming here. And this was something I mentioned in the ARA, uh, the vocal tuning video I recently did. In compatibility settings, save minimal undo states is going to be enabled by default. I had it off earlier today, just as an experiment. If it's off, then you can use Control Z or Command Z um, to undo within the plugin. But you may run into an issue where it's constantly trying to save. And so, uh, yeah. Having that on is kind of the recommended way for now. Just watch out for if you hit undo, sometimes it will just remove the plugin completely. So rather than undoing a change inside of the plugin, it removes the plugin because that was the last kind of global Reaper thing that you did. And as well, ARA supports linear tempo transitions, which I'm not going to demonstrate. When you go into free item positioning mode on a track, it's going to cr automatically create some space for you to insert another file. And it's just going to be a little bit easier. See how it shrunk? Uh, so now this is a little less than like half the, uh, the size. It's a little easier than it used to be where you had to, once you went into that mode, you had to resize before you could bring in another item like that. Um, used to be like this would fill up the whole thing you have to resize this and then bring in your other item all right so now we're looking at the region marker manager and the uh, region matrix so let's open up that all right so there's a couple new things um we can see the colors in the region marker manager. Um, and these colors are now visible inside of the region render matrix as well. In here, we've got this option, show track render menu nested by folders. And so when we click here and we see the, um, the different tracks, there's folders, and we can choose an individual track uh, within a folder. Otherwise, with this off, it's just a flat list and we see everything. We, there's no indication of what's a folder or not. We're just seeing folder names, which I've named folder, but you know that would be anything. That would be drums or, or your buses or your effects tracks, whatever you would call your tracks. As well, in the region render matrix, we have a new icon to uh, collapse our folders. And this actually collapses the folders inside of the project. So when they're completely collapsed, they will be hidden here as well. So now it's a lot easier to tell which tracks are uh, the, the top level, the highest hierarchy. When we go to the render window and we look at region render matrix as our source, 
we now have a new option of doing just selected regions. So when I have all project regions enabled, the two regions that I have enabled for rendering as my time bounds are there. We can also set this to selected regions. So right now I have no region selected. You have to select regions from the region marker manager. I don't think you can actually make a selection here. Um, but yeah, if I click on this one, this one's highlighted in the region marker manager and in the render window, I see it says one region and so that's what it's going to use for rendering. So this is great if you have a particular set of uh, settings for your render matrix and there was like a, some issue with just one of the renders. Instead of resetting everything, clearing all these dots, um, you could just select a single region uh, without altering your matrix and then render it again. So there's a bunch of changes to theming in this update. So um, the first one is, we all know this red light that comes on the track uh, when we arm it for recording. There's a new image for the theme when you set it to record disable. So it's still gonna light up red, but it's only the center part of it. Uh, so this track will monitor only, it won't uh, record. So it'll pass through audio in, uh, whenever you're recording, but it won't actually record that. There's also the option, I'm gonna put this back on input, um, there's automatic record arm when track selected. And so we're gonna see a little A um, on this track. So this one's selected, got that A on it, and this one, and also it could work with record disable and auto um, at the same time. If we open up the theme configuration window and we look at um, grid, we now have new options for uh, every type of grid line and choosing their blend or alpha mode, um, normal add, dodge, multiply, overlay, or HSV adjust uh, with alpha control for all of them. So I think I'm gonna keep it on the default of normal mode, um, but if you're a theme maker, there's probably some cool things you can do with that. Another thing in here is MIDI editor CC lane add remove buttons. All right, so let's just open up a MIDI item. And so the add and remove buttons are here. So let's change this to a more obvious color, like pink. And so these, these uh, buttons are now pink. Like that. So there's these horizontal lines in the uh, CC lanes, and uh, we can now change the color. So change this to like this blue color. And so we've got blue horizontal lines there. And there's also the draw mode, which is at 50% opacity, 50% um, alpha there. We can change the blend mode here as well. Piano pane background can now be changed. So let's I don't know what this will look like, but oh, there we go. So this is another nice um, configuration option here uh, that can really change the look of, of the piano editor. And then there's some other things like improving the text contrast color. So just uh, if there's text on top of a dark background, that text is going to be light um, and vice versa. So, and then there's some other things that are just getting ready for uh, the next version of Reaper and um, version six themes, stuff that white tie needs to get the new default theme ready. The last thing I have to show you in this video is from 5.973 takes added actions to cycle to next or previous takes, which is the before 5.965 behavior. So now there's two different actions for switching takes. So in Reaper 5.965, the way that cycling takes, um, the normal action for this changed functions. I don't think it was widely known that it changed. Um, so there, now there's a new action that gets you the old behavior. So I'm gonna show you the 
the 9.65 way first. So switch items to next take. If I run this, um, both of these items switched to take three uh, because take three was the one after take two in the second item. So it's going to jump to the next take after the last selected take or the highest number take. So it's a little bit confusing there. Now, if we reset these back to take one on the first item, take two on the second item, and we run this newer action, cycle items to next take, it's going to just advance them by one. And that's the old behavior before 5.965. So if you prefer that, and I prefer that, um, just remember to switch your uh, keyboard shortcuts to that. So I'm using Shift T to uh, cycle items to next take and shift R to cycle items to previous take. I think the defaults are going to be R and T. So yeah, so just have a look at that. And so that's it for what's new in Reaper 5.971 to 973. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Support the Reaper blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials.